So, a while ago, I built myself a CNC router. I had a few weeks to play around with it, learn to machine, and test some different materials. I will do a video in the future testing different materials and machining speeds, so subscribe for that. However, everything that I've made so far has one thing in common. It only has one side that is machined. But what we want to machine multiple sides of a workpiece. This is the 3-axis machine, so the spindle can turn to machine at an angle. What can be done is machining multiple sides by rotating the workpiece manually. This is exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and let me tell you what I did. So this is the model that I decided to make. It is very similar to my simple bowl, the first thing I machined on this router. The only difference is the hole and the fact that it requires pockets on both sides. With that out of the way, let's get into the toolpath. The first thing I did was setting up the workpiece. For the orientation, I first set the z-axis to up and the zero point to the top center of my workpiece. With the other axis the way they are, the piece would be machined something like this. Remember that for my machine, the x right and y back is positive. I decided to machine it out of this 80mm thick piece of plywood. So that is where the thickness value comes from. The first tool path is a pocket cut. I decided to use a 4mm two flute straight cut end mill for the job, with a feed rate of 600mm per second and a depth of cut of 1.5mm. However, in later testing it turned out I could go way more aggressive with these settings. Similar settings were used in the other tool paths. One pocket to machine the top surface, one for the hole and a canto cut on the outer edges. So that are the tool paths for the first side. The second side is handled by the second setup. The main difference is the orientation of the workpiece. The entire workpiece orientation is rotated by 180 degrees around the y-axis, which is exactly what I will do between the top and bottom operation. This and the zero position are the two main parts that you have to look out for, otherwise you might screw up your alignment. I decided to have the x and y corners of both zero positions the same. If I know the difference between the first zero position and the rotation axis, I can easily calculate the new zero position. The two paths of both operations are pretty much the same. One comes from the top and one from the bottom. There's one final thing I would like to mention. As you can see I have set the tabs to be quite high. The idea here is to have the first contour cut take off most of the material. The second one from the other side then takes off the rest, leaving me with tabs that are only 2mm in height. I made sure to export both operations as separate files, since I would have to manually rotate the material between them. However, before I started the machine process, I finally added a proper waste board. This is a 80mm thick MDF board and I fixed it to the base plate with 4 deeply countersunk bolts. I put them so deep just to prevent the machine's end mill from accidentally colliding with the steel screw. I then used a flat end mill with a diameter of 60mm to take a few millimeters off the surface to flatten the entire work area. This was a really dusty operation and even with my vacuum running all the time, I couldn't contain everything. Now, let's get to machining this part. To attach the material, I just used some wood screws.
Now with the front finished, it was time to rotate the part. However, I couldn't just unscrew and flip it, since that would make it pretty much impossible to set our new zero position. We actually need to get it to within one tenth of a millimeter to get good results. There are several ways to do that. I went with what I call the pin method. The idea is that you drill two holes with a diameter of in my case 4mm through your part and into the wasteboard. You then unscrew the material and use pins with the same diameter as the holes to align your material flipped. I at first tried to use the 4mm end mill on the machine to drill the holes directly. However, that didn't work out as there was some sort of resonance build up, which completely screwed up the hole. My next solution was to use a smaller 3.175mm end mill to drill the holes in a spiral pattern. I made an extra model and tool path just for that purpose. However, in hindsight it would have been easier and faster to just use a 4mm drill bit instead of an end mill and go straight into the material. Anyway, with the hole drilled I used some 4mm pins to align the workpiece. These are not proper pins but rather just two pieces from a 4mm aluminum rod that I had laying around. Since the two zero positions in my program have the same x and y coordinates and I know the distance between the first zero position and the pin position, I can easily calculate the new zero position. After that I started the second program. Now at first I was pretty satisfied with the results, but after some closer inspection, the surface finish didn't look as good as I would expect for a machine like this. This is partly because of a bit of twist in the machine's 28 extrusion. I couldn't change that in a short time frame. Instead, I turned my attention to this 3D printed part. This has been causing problems for me ever since I first used this machine. I really don't know what I was thinking when I decided to just screw the 500W spindle directly into the plastic material. At this point, I couldn't even screw the spindle tight, since all the threads pretty much disappeared. This of course resulted in quite a bit of play, so I knew I had to redesign this part. It now uses proper nuts and the M3 bolts are countersunk to not interfere with the spindle. Reprinting this part took quite a while, so I hope I won't have to do it again in the future. After I did the modifications, I redid the same steps as before.
have to say I'm much happier with the results of my second try. Not only the surface finished better, but the machine sounded way better while machining. So that is how you do two-sided machining. You can even use the same principle to machine a block from four or more sides, if you manage to align it properly. Now that the video is pretty much over, I would like to say a few things about this machine and its future. I received some comments from people who would try to build this machine. It makes me really proud that you think this machine is a good fit for you. However, I would like to point out some problems with this machine, just so you guys get the full picture. First, these linear rails screw directly into the plastic material. This worked out fine for me, since I used some long M3 screws, but this is something you have to be aware of. Secondly, these spacers are really annoying. Not the spacers themselves, but rather the fact that they require a screw to screw in from the bottom. This means that all of the holes need to be really accurate, and as I already mentioned in my first video, I also couldn't align all of them perfectly. I have already redesigned this part. It now screws into the extrusion and the whole structure is then attached to the base plate with some wood screws. This is a way better solution. You can also increase the height of these spacers to increase the available Z height. Since with a 80mm thick baseboard, it is actually pretty limited in terms of height. In my case, I cannot machine anything that is thicker than 45mm, so there is some wasted Z travel. I didn't print or test this part, since I don't need it. Also, yes, I didn't attach the bearing support. I should really do that, but I'm just way too lazy. I also plan to remake this machine with aluminum parts in the future, fix some issues and test how that affects the performance. Subscribe if you want to see that. I will go on a vacation for a while, so I might not be online for a few weeks. Also, tell me what you think about the animations in the comments below. They took an eternity to render, so you hope you like them. As always, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I will see you next time.